want to welcome all of you to our first sitting inside the cabinet, inside the cabinet room, inside the cabinet room. And today, I want to say to the people of St. Kitts and Nevis that we are ready, ready to really set the agenda to take St. Kitts and Nevis back to number one. I want to say congratulations to all of you. Um, you have formed part now of a transformative um, cabinet, one that I know would make the people of St. Kitts and Nevis very, very proud for selecting us to lead the government at this time. Um, I want to <clears throat> say also that as we set forth our agenda, that we stay in constant communication with the people so that there can be constant feedback between us and the people so that we make sure that we stay on the path that we have put forth and the people have given us the mandate to follow. And so I'm very excited about that to get started. And just to let the people know, we have already started to work. I have indicated <clears throat> with the support of my colleagues that we would have discussed that there be no more restrictions for our people to travel in St. Kitts and Nevis. I've indicated a waiver until we would have sorted out all of the necessary channels. So there's a waiver now. So at this present moment, our people can travel to St. Kitts and Nevis without any restrictions at all. They don't need to do any test. Um, and they're given the option to upload their information, which will make uh, processing at the airport much easier for them. And all of this is based on sound scientific advice. I would have met with the task force. We would have gone through the scientific data. And therefore, I want to announce that based on that, their advice in discussions, that there is no scientific basis to continue um, the restrictions. And therefore, they are lifted. And I'm sure that our people will be happy for that. I also want to reiterate that our CFBC will be a, a free institution for our people and for um, nationals, for our citizens, and for the non-nationals who are here, um, their children especially who grew up here, who attend CFBC, their children, fathers and mothers, our parents and guardians who are paying social security and social levy, they will benefit from our policy at the CFBC as well. <clears throat> yes, <laughs> I want to congratulate the education minister on that. <laughs> um, I also want to say that in discussion with the financial secretary, we are now finalizing creating that fund for children who need specialized care outside of the federation, who don't have insurance, whose parents can't afford it that the uh, medical bills be paid. So no longer would any child have to die because the parents don't have money. And I want to say thank you again to my colleagues for supporting that. That was a campaign promise, and that is what we are fulfilling. And, uh, <laughs> and I think there was another measure. Anybody remember that one? The, the MRI. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, they're yes, they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> we had promised the MRI as well, and the money has been allocated for the MRI, and we should have the MRI in short order. I've already received the information um, from the hospital as to the type of MRI and so forth, and so we'll move quickly. Just so you know, just to put the MRI in a, a room is as big as a bedroom, and that can easily be and quickly be constructed by our own professionals here mm -hmm. and the MRI should be up and running and I've indicated to them that the cost has to be as low as possible and nobody will be turned back because they lack the financial resources to get an MRI done. MRI has now become a mainstay um, in medical practice and as a high income modern country we should have that available and available at our hospital and that will be available in quick order as well. So I want our people to know that that has been done also. <clears throat> 